VRAM limitation has become a major discussion point recently for obvious reasons. 8 gigs of VRAM is just not enough for modern games, while Nvidia and even AMD are keeping this VRAM buffer size as a standard on their cards that definitely deserve more. But what if I tell you that there is a simple and elegant solution to fix poor VRAM buffer size? This solution was implemented back in 2017 and worked properly, but people just didn't care about it, called it useless, and it became one of the reasons why the developer of this solution has stopped working on it. This developer is called AMD, this solution is called HBCC, and it was implemented on RX Vega GPUs. Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. HBCC stands for High Bandwidth Cache Controller that relies on properties of High Bandwidth Memory or simply HBM, the only alternative to GDDR type of VRAM subsystem that was used on Radeon RX Vega graphics series. This forgotten feature is the favorite Raja Kaduris, the head engineer technology on Vega cards. The controller itself, when enabled, restructures the memory subsystem so that the VROM becomes simply the lowest level cache in hierarchy with RAM, and the controller can smartly rearrange the data between the two according to information about specific data that is more likely to be useful in rendering frames at current time. From the software side of things, it just looks like the GPU has more VROM when HBCC is activated, and you can even adjust this amount in driver settings. Why didn't people like HBCC back in the days if it's that cool? Well, simply because both Figure 56 and 64 had 8GB of VRAM and the later addition to the architecture Radeon 7 had 16. It just was enough itself and people were considering the HBCC setting in driver as just a useless switch that doesn't really do anything. But today, 8GB of VRAM is a major problem, and in this video we will take a close look at HPCC behavior in a real VROM limited scenarios in modern games that tend to require more than 8GB, and check if Subfire Pulse Vega 56 is still capable of running latest games at 1440p with ultra textures, something that RX 5700 XT or even RTX 3070 can't do at times. All the tests were done on a pretty modern but still a bit limiting platform with Ryzen 9 3900X and 16GB of RAM at 3600MHz. The limitation here is a RAM buffer size, since 16GB RAM is close to being a bottleneck in some games even without any HBCC usage. With HBCC, the demand on RAM gets higher, so in some not VRAM but RAM limited settings, activating HBCC can even lower the performance on this specific rig. For that reason, the amount of HBCC allocated memory was chosen to be 12GB, since even applying 14 was noticeably ruining the performance in some games from the RAM side. So all the results in this video are not laboratory precise, and with a more suitable testing rig you should expect to see even better results. But maybe that makes our test more realistic, since not that many people have Vega installed in their PC with 32 gigs of RAM. I have actually no idea what went wrong on Far Cry 6, the game obviously frees without HBCC due to lack of available VRAM, but instead of improving the smoothness and reducing freezes, HBCC has done the opposite to this game's performance. That's kinda sad.
Looks like Hogwarts Legacy doesn't like the HBCC approach to memory management in the same way as Far Cry. Or doesn't it? Let's take a closer look at the textures. They are just missing without HBCC, so that's the clear evidence technology works correctly. Well, that looks a bit shocking after previous games, isn't it? In fact, the game's performance without HBCC varies from playable to completely unplayable from time to time, and you can never guess it. But after some playtime, it gets to low frame rate anyway. Our final measurements have nothing in common with the actual recording, because we always measure FPS on a separate run than recording the footage. But as I said, the behavior of this game is just random. The game with HBCC runs completely fine on the other hand, and the frame time spikes that you see here appear only when recording, so it's actually a smooth experience. Forspoken shows the same performance between on and off HBCC. Until it doesn't. Uh, this kind of drop can happen through the game due to lack of VRAM and HBCC fix that. When Resident Evil 4 is cold started, it works alright on Vega even without HBCC, but if you play the game for a bit, it starts to seriously struggle. HBCC doesn't remove all the starters, but it fixes the general poor performance and makes the game a lot smoother. In general, HBCC is surprisingly effective. It lets Vega 56 handle the ultra textures in some of the most VRAM demanding games in 2023 using the overall reasonable settings, at least with console 30. But of course, it is worth mentioning that this solution doesn't equally benefit all the tested games. Far Cry 6, for example, even shows a way worse result when HBCC is on for some reason. This can be a bug or something, but still, HBCC is a good but not an ultimate solution. But today we have also prepared something special for you. Thanks to Icebook Tag, we have a Gigabyte RTX 3070 for this test. This was released around 3 years after Radeon Vega 56 with a 100 bucks higher price. If Vega 56 with HBCC can win in comparison with it even in a couple of games, wouldn't that be cool? I mean, we know the reasons why it can win in some specific scenarios, but just think about that for a minute. 
a card that was a competitor to 1070 Ti could win in comparison to 3070? Let's check it out. And yeah, this video wouldn't be possible without Iceberg Tech borrowing me his main GPU, so make sure to check his channel, where he talks a lot about hardware of the past running the latest, most demanding games. The link is in the description. Far Cry 6 is a super easy win for an RTX 3070 with almost double the performance of Vega with HBCC, despite going well over the VRAM buffer. Nothing surprising, since in this game HBCC only makes things worse for Radeon. The game still runs stutter in 3070, but at times it even gets CPU limited, so with a better CPU the performance would be even higher. Obviously, this performance difference is something to be expected as a usual thing between Vega 56 and RTX 3070, and the reason for that gap here, despite VROM limitation, is that the texture issue that was here on 8GB Vega without HBCC appears on RTX 3070 as well. RTX 3070 is still noticeably faster in Last of Us, but just take a look at the frame time graph. There are some spikes on both cards that are just there because of recording and you can't really feel them. However, Vegas graphs look a lot more like a straight line. That's a win for 3070, but it is still an unbelievably good result for Radeon and unbelievably bad for the GeForce. RTX 3070's frame rate in Forspoken is really unstable. The performance can vary from run to run. Uh, the average FPS is obviously a lot higher, but the minimum is roughly the same here between the two. Overall, game's behavior on 3070 is just more stuttery. More stuttery than on a GPU from 2017 with a 100 bucks smaller launch price. The 
The performance of 3070 in Resident Evil 4 is super unstable, sometimes it gets really far from Vega, sometimes surprisingly close, and even with a few spikes as big as an old Radiant, the minimum FPS in this game is super close between the two. Ok, we are not trying to say that 6 years old Vega 56 is not worse than 3070 in this video. A much newer and more expensive GeForce GPU has tons of benefits, such as newer API support, way superior performance in most of the cases, support of new features such as ray tracing, and it doesn't even consume as much power as an old Radiant card. What we are trying to show is the forgotten technology that seems so useful today and that can, in certain condition, allow an old 8GB Radeon to match 3070's level of comfort. Again, the keyword here is in certain conditions. I guess that's it for today, don't forget about likes, subscribes, bell icon and hardware up discord server, and as usual, stay up to date with HL.